guys, Rambling Bob here again. So guess what? Holy cow. More information from this channel that is nowhere else on the internet. It's not on Pecron's website. It's not on Pecron's user manual. And it's not on any other review channel, guys. Do you know what it is? There is a hidden firmware menu in this thing. And it's not listed anywhere. Not even on Pecron's website. Look at this. I did the whole thing. Check this out. Okay. So, it's an access... Uh, uh, you know different changes it has very similar changes to what this one had but let me show you how to get to it so when let's start from scratch so when you first get your your system and you want to change a few of the options always write down the numbers before you change them that way you remember what the default number is because as I said this information is nowhere on the internet I, I couldn't find it anywhere not even on Pecron's website not even on Pecron's uh, user manual. So let's see here. Let me get the user manual. I think it's in here. Sounds like it's in here. Hold on. I don't usually read these, but I always get yelled at for not reading them. Okay. So this is the E600 LFP. This is the user manual, guys, right? So all the user manual should have all the info, right? Well, that menu is hidden. The same as what built this entire channel. This one had a hidden menu that you had to set up for the batteries. Now, this one has a hidden menu that you don't have to set up for the batteries, but you have to use that to set up the options if you want. So here, this is all your things. So here it's got specifications, outputs, input specs. This is the introduction. It tells you what the ports are. Okay, the next page is how to use it, basically how to turn it on, how to turn it off. Uh, smart uh, display. Notice it doesn't say anything about a menu. Here's a packing list. Here's the recharge time. Here's the solar time. Next page, we have... Uh, solar panels, blah, blah, blah. This is the input, the 5-pin, the 5521 input. This is how to set up the solar panels. The next page, frequently asked questions, disclaimers, and warnings. Stuff like don't use in the water. And then look at, guys, there's nothing there. Again, this video possibly could go what they call viral or something like that. Who knows? All right, so here. So when you first get your E6000 LFP, and this is a fantastic model, by the way. I like this little box better than this big one as far as the quality. I, I like it better. Uh, I think all of the bugs have been worked out of this one right away. Except, Pequon didn't give you the darn thing how to access the firmware. Again, holy cow. All right, you guys ready for this? So you can either turn it on AC or you can turn it on DC. Either way to turn it on. I always do AC. I'm not much of a DC guy. A lot of people that follow this channel for months now knows that I'm not really big into uh, uh, DC power unless I'm charging my phone or something like that. And I don't even have a phone, so I don't have to do that either. So if I'm charging a tablet or a phone or another power station, then then I would do that. But okay, so back, back to the, 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 the most important thing. Okay, so... You remember, you guys remember this video, how you had to hold down to the, remember there's two menus. You hold down both and then this wire frame would flash and then you hit the, the AC, the bottom one, twice. And then you would get a firmware that you didn't even know that was there. That was the hidden menu that built this entire uh, uh, YouTube channel thingy. I mean, okay, so you're going to do the same technique, okay? So you hold down both, you're going to see that wire frame on the battery. See how it's flashing? And then I hit that twice. Now look at that. That's a hidden menu, guys. So there's a trick in the industry. Everything that has a, uh, a software, everything has a circuit board, everything that has any kind of uh, program or anything has a back door. That's what they call them. They call them back doors. So Windows, uh, iMacs, everything has a back door to the way into the system. That's just that's where programmers uh, design things like that so they can access it in case there's a problem. That way they can fix it or test it that way. So notice number one right away says 20 volts. Now, I think there's, I think one of these, and I think that's the one that I'm not 100% sure what it is, but we have access to it. So if you remember on the original PEC run, this was only 65 watts on the E2000, right? And then they had to upgrade the protocol. It's called a protocol. And I believe, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe that that's 20 volts times 5 amps is... 100 watts you see how you do that so if you were to drop this down to 15 i believe 15 uh times uh boy i lost my train of thought here times 5 amps is 65 watts 
And then, you know, as you go down, down, down. So I believe that's what number one is. I, I'm not 100% certified of that because, guess what, guys? There's no manual for it again. So how crazy is this? Okay, two in a row. So number one, I believe, is the power output for the power delivery port of the USB. That's the only thing I can think of because nothing else here uses 20 volt output, right? Even the battery's 25 point. Uh, six so that's even higher than that. So we'll leave that at 20 right now because like I said I don't know 100% what that's for now the second one if you hold the AC for a long press Notice it goes to 610 watts. I believe and I'm like I said, I'm only making guesses at this I think you're educated guesses, but they're guesses. I believe that is the watt hours see the W and the H 610 watt hours. This is actually a 614 watt hour battery box but I believe they set it to 610 because that saves four extra watt hours in reserve kind of like your your E on your gas tank once you get to E you're not out of gas it's letting you know hey if you don't get your butt to a gas station you will be out of gas that's why they colored it red as a warning right but watch what you can do you can change these see this now we know it was 610 so I feel very comfortable about changing these uh, changing these because I, I monkeyed with these for a long time now guys so but watch when I hit this bottom button see when I do short taps you see how it went over see that it goes to the next digit right and now we know that's 10 and then I'll look at you could go over again see this and you go back to six right but now watch this guys if you hit it one more time look at a number comes out of nowhere guys this isn't any manual anywhere on the internet uh, no review channels have it. I haven't seen it anywhere. So notice that I can go all the way up to, look at this, 9,999 watt hours. And the reason I believe it does that, the reason I think it does that is because the, 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 uh, either the software or the program that they wrote for this board is identical to this one. Now, Pecron is famous for not deleting portions of uh, their programs or other things when they implement uh, parts into new systems. I've noticed that. I have enough systems now to, to kind of put the balls together as far as education-wise and go, hmm, well, this ball was that, that ball was that, put them together, boop, okay, I see. They use th that same uh, program a a as this one, right? So we leave that at 610, and that's for the power meter, guys. So if I were to set this to 305, that means that as soon as I use half of this, the meter would say it's empty. Yet you know it's not empty because it's 600, uh, 614, right? So I believe that I'm positive that that's what that one is, okay? So now you go to the third one, uh, the, long, the, the long press. So you hold that down and you go to number three. Now notice number three is the same as the one that was down here, L3. That stands for level three. If you watch what happens when I go down to level two and down to level one, you notice how this gets dimmer? That'll save power over time, guys. If you don't need it so bright, it doesn't save a lot of power, but hey, you only got 614 to start with. You might as well save what you can, right? I like it all the way up. Um, the, the, the brighter lights is easier for outside, and that way if you have a very bright room or a very uh, sunlit room or you're outside, uh, you can see it better. And of course, if you leave it, you notice this one, see it? So it'll automatically dim anyway. So I leave it on the bright one. I like that. Okay, so menu number four is very, very, very important, guys. This is an extremely important menu uh, uh, number. This is, and I've confirmed this one myself, this is a timer. Guys, so this one by default is set to off. Now, what do you guys think that timer is for? I'll give it two seconds to think. Time's up. That's for the 12-volt regulated cigarette port. This guy. So if you want to have uh, a, like a little baby refrigerator or a mobile freezer or something like that, something that uses... Um, uh, he, uh, a very good one is a heating blanket. Heating blanket goes through cycles. If a heating blanket is on all the time, you would burn down your bed. So it goes through cycles. It heats up. There's a heat element inside the, uh, the uh, blanket. Once that heats up to a certain temperature, it cuts off the power. And then when it cools down, it heats up again. So n normally, the average heating blanket never stays one temperature all the time. That's why you have hot spots and cold spots in heating blankets. Unless you pay a ton of money, and then some of them are like uh, automatic. But I don't want to pay 500 bucks for a heating blanket, you know, unless it's really, 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 really comfortable. Okay, so what you do is you can go from off, which means when 
uh, I turn it off. The DC goes off. No other time. I want it on all the time, so I leave it off. It's kind of backwards if you think about it that way. If I want this to be on all the time, you want it off. So on is off. And then you can go up to notice one hour, two, three, four, five, and six. The same as this model had, up to six hours standby. Which means after six hours, if it detects no load, this box will turn off if you're running just DC or AC actually. So that's nice if you want that. If you don't want that, you leave that darn thing off, right? So if, if you were to set it to something as simple as like one hour, there's no fridge out there that's not going to cycle within an hour. They usually turn on every 15 to 20 to 30 minutes, something like that, on average. you know. And then if you're in hotter weather, it might turn on a little bit more than that. But depending, uh, I, I like I said, I, I leave it off. I want it off because I want to tell the box what to do. The number one reason, this sounds bad, the number one reason I bought Pecron to begin with is I look at as a very simplistic station. I didn't want all the fancy apps. I didn't want all the download this and download that. <clears throat> excuse me. And, you know, um, program this. I, I just want to turn the box on, make popcorn, and then turn it off. Like, literally, that's it. So that's why I loved the Pecron from the beginning. Okay? So that's menu number four. Now, menu number five is 1200 watts now what do you think 1200 watts is guys i'll give you two seconds okay so the 1200 watts is the actual cutoff or the warning for the uh power output so once you put uh 1200 watts for the meter it'll go all the way up to 100 percent. so this one regulates you know that little speedometer meter thing I'm pretty sure that's what that's for. So if you put this to 600 and use 600 watts, it would say 100% output. Um, so that way, uh, basically, it, it's more like um, more like a decoration. That little meter really doesn't do much. Uh, you just watch your wattage out and then you're good. But that's your limit. Remember, this is a, a 1200 watt out uh, AC inverter and there's your 1200 watts on your little meter. So that regulates the meter. I'm pretty sure of that. Okay. <coughs> And obviously, you can change it like that in increments of 100. Okay, talking fast, so I'm choking over here. Okay, so you have number six now. So you hold this down again and go to number six. Now, number six, notice the number came up over here. Now, that's the exact same number that's down here. So this one is the low cutoff for the battery safety for the cells. Once you get to 22 volts, whether you like it or not, this bad boy is going to shut down on you and turn off until you plug it in or hook solar to it this will not never turn on again because that's to protect and save the battery cells from getting too low and then you'll damage the battery cells okay so we'll go to the, the next one which is the last one boom so 27.9 volts now for those of us who had this version in version two or more there was another number on there right and it was this is called the finalizing voltage that's what i call it so when when you finalize a battery you 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 completely bring it up as high as it can go safely that's the key safely and then it it, it floats and what floating is is it keeps it kind of trickling just a little bit little bit little bit if you watch that soda video i made it'll put a little bit of energy well that's the voltage so it just keeps it a little bit just to keep the power at exactly what you need for the voltage and then you can obviously set that if you if, if well maybe you can't oh yep you sure can so now see it's way too high right or way too low so you put it back to 27.9 and then the last time uh is if you hold this down it'll say eep now that's the same thing that this one said right eep when you finished or finalized or i think the newer versions uh, said something else. I think it was done or D O N or something like that. But it means the same thing. Now notice the system turned back on. Here's your power meter. This is back to normal. Everything works good. But that's. Can you guys imagine that? So the 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 irony that this hidden menu that built this entire channel, they forgot to put it in here again, guys. Now it doesn't sound very important, but if you're a tech guy or if you want this dimmer 
or if you want uh, you know this to turn on and off guys this is important information you need that because if you want that to turn off and you don't know that there's a, a hidden menu in there well you ain't turning that off right or, or setting it to automatic or if you want see if you want that dimmer or, or, or brighter and you can set those levels if you don't have this knowledge that's not in here or not in anywhere on the internet or anywhere I I've, I've not found it anywhere other than my own channel for God's sake I'm looking at I watch my own channel to learn my own stuff and the reason I learned this guys is I'm very very inquisitive sometimes so I thought you know what I'm gonna take a stab at it and I'm gonna risk breaking this box that I just got to see if it has the same hidden functions as this one does and you know what doggone it it does so there you go guys there's a hidden firmware inside this one the same as this model so I hope this information finds you well and uh, if you need to change any of those options remember do like I did write them down and make sure that um, you know what the numbers are as defaults before you go monkeying around in there guys because you could really break your system or damage something by changing those values and not knowing how to put them back all right so I'm gonna turn this off and then I'm gonna turn this off and there you go guys Pecron Brambling Bob reviews thank you be very safe and then I'll see you next time guys bye <laughs>